Green hydrogen could be the fuel of the future. Here's why it's not yet a silver bullet. One potential form of clean energy is green hydrogen, which is derived from renewable sources like water, rather than fossil fuels, and can be used to power heavy industry and fuel large vehicles, like planes and ships. Why do we need green hydrogen? But there are some industries that require so much energy that traditional renewables can't meet their demand. That's a problem, because those industries are among the top emitters of greenhouse gas. This is where experts say green hydrogen has huge potential die operating a plane or a large ship, for instance, requires so much energy that any battery used to store electricity from solar or wind would likely be too large and heavy for the vessel. Green hydrogen, on the other hand, can come in liquid form and is lighter. According to Airbus, which is developing a zero-emissions commercial aircraft, the energy density of green hydrogen is three times higher than jet fuels we use today. While liquid green hydrogen would emit zero carbon, it has some limitations. When burned in the open atmosphere it releases a small amount of nitrous oxide, which is a potent greenhouse gas. If the hydrogen is stored in a fuel cell, however, it will only emit water and warm air. Some small planes have managed to fly with hydrogen fuel cells, though the technology hasn't yet been scaled up commercially. Green, blue, or gray, hydrogen is Earth's most abundant element. It's found in many things, including fossil fuels, water, plants, animals and even humans, but it never appears naturally in pure form. That means to get pure hydrogen, it needs to be separated from other molecules through processes that also require energy. Gray hydrogen is the most commonly used form of hydrogen today. It is relatively inexpensive, but is derived from natural gas and typically uses fossil fuels as the energy source. It's used mostly in the chemical industry to make things like fertilizer and for oil refining. In the process of extracting the hydrogen from natural gas, the remaining carbon dioxide is allowed to escape into the atmosphere, which further contributes to climate change. Blue hydrogen is generated with the same process as gray hydrogen, but most of the carbon emitted during its production is captured and not released into the atmosphere, which is why it's described as a low emissions gas. So, which one is the best climate solution? It ultimately depends on the energy used to produce it. Great hydrogen has long been seen as a cleaner bridging alternative as the world winds off coal and oil, but it's still a major contributor to climate change. Recent studies have also shown that gray hydrogen emits more greenhouse gas than energy experts initially thought. Methane, a powerful greenhouse gas and the main component of natural gas, often leaks from pipelines into the atmosphere. If green hydrogen generated from water in the electrolysis process to extract the hydrogen molecules is powered fully with energy from renewable sources like solar and wind, then green hydrogen could be a zero emissions option. But it's not there yet. The machines used to carry out this electrolysis are costly and the process isn't particularly efficient. In 2020, of all the low carbon hydrogen produced, 95% of it was blue, according to a recent report from the IEA. But by 2050, as the green hydrogen industry develops, it should be more readily available, easier to produce and cost competitive with blue hydrogen by 2030, the IEA reports. By 2050, the share is projected to be 35% blue hydrogen and 62% green, providing governments and businesses are successful in developing the industry. Jess Cowell, a campaigner with Friends of the Earth Scotland, is opposed to any use of blue hydrogen, saying that it simply allows fossil fuel companies to stay in business and keep emitting. There may be a future for green hydrogen, Cowell said, but now is not the time to invest in it. It doesn't make sense right now, Cowell explained, to use hydrogen for purposes like heating homes, which is being discussed in the United Kingdom as an option. If renewable electricity sources are being used to create hydrogen. So what we want to see is using the renewable electricity for direct electrification, Cowell said explaining that the gas-fired boilers typically used to heat homes in Scotland and the UK more widely should be electrified and run on wind and solar energy, rather than hydrogen. Why is blue hydrogen controversial? Blue hydrogen has been controversial in many countries, including the UK, where the government recently released its twin-track hydrogen strategy, which showed heavy use of the blue, kind alongside development of green hydrogen. Jackson said in a statement that he appreciated that green hydrogen was not a silver bullet. Equally, I cannot ignore or make arguments for blue hydrogen being a viable and green energy solution he said. Overall, 
blue hydrogen's greenhouse gas footprint was 20% larger than burning natural gas or coal for heat, and 60% greater than burning diesel oil for heat. The study found out there are also some questions around whether storing carbon after it's captured, which usually involves injecting it into the ground, is sustainable. Our analysis assumes that captured carbon dioxide can be stored indefinitely, an optimistic and unproven assumption. Even if true though, the use of blue hydrogen appears difficult to justify on climate grounds the study concludes. Rem, from the IEA, however, said that study made some assumptions that underestimated how much greenhouse gas could be captured, and that even if blue hydrogen were not as clean as the green type, it had a place in the world's transition away from fossil fuels. There is a role for both blue and green hydrogen, but we have to ensure that blue hydrogen is produced with the highest environmental standards," he said. The technologies are already available today to avoid these emissions, and they are often also cost-effective and save money. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.